Hi, this is Dr. Prasad Patilam, continuing the class series on research methodology and intellectual property rights. Uh, this is module 4, uh, first video of module 4, uh, covering uh, the portions as uh, question answer, indicating uh, the uh, revised uh, Bloom's taxonomy level. So, based on the uh, syllabus, the syllabus which is given. Uh, this much portion uh, which is highlighted here, I am covering this particular class video. Uh, the re remaining uh, 4 or 5 class videos, I will cover the entire uh, uh, syllabus. So, I am giving as a question, this is actually 4th uh, uh, module uh, entirely, all the topic uh, comes under the course outcome, uh, understanding the copyright laws and subject matters of copyright and design. Okay, so the uh, referred uh, the textbook uh, which is mentioned in the uh, syllabus is this particular uh, textbook that you can download from the internet by typing this uh, particular name or uh, uh, giving the link or giving the ISBN international uh, standard of uh, book number. Uh, if you give that number also, you can download that freely from the internet. So no need of worrying about uh, the study material. Okay, so this is the topic which I am covering now, law of uh, copyright and design, understanding copyright law, historical overview, justification for copyright law, the natural law of justification, the economic rationality of copyright clause. Okay, so a question is framed based on covering this topic, uh, a 10 mark question uh, framed uh, with the revised Bloom's taxonomy level of 3. How do the historical overview and justification like the natural law justification and the economic uh, rationale lay of copyright clause contribute to a nuanced understanding of copyright law and its role in governing um, intellectual property rights. Okay, so the answer key is also uh, given the law of copyright and design, understanding copyright law, historic overview, justification of copyright law, the natural law justification, the economic rationale of copyright. So, the marks I will be awarding based on this uh, subheading in the uh, answer. Okay, so one by one if I discuss the law of copyright and design, law of copyright and design, uh, it, uh, uh, it is a legal, uh, it is actually a law of uh, framed, it is a legal framework that uh, grants or awards exclusive right to a creator and others for their original work, okay, which include uh, the literacy. Uh, liter literary or uh, artistic uh, or music creations uh, uh, giving the creators the control over the reproduction or its uh, distribution and the public performance of their work that is copyright. The law of design on the other hand uh, the law of design it, uh, it covers or it encompasses the legal provisions which protect the visual appearance and the aesthetics of uh, uh, in the industrial or uh, the consumer product. Uh, so this one then again pro provides the designers uh, with the exclusive right to their original design uh, which prevents the unauthorized copying or, uh, or the imitation by others in a commercial uh, atmosphere or in the commercial space. Now, understanding the copyright law, uh, defining the creator rights and responsibility, it is very essential uh, for a creator and users of uh, uh, in, in intellectual property to understand the laws. This legal framework, uh, it defines the rights and responsibilities regarding the original works of the authorship. It regulates uh, how the creator can protect their uh, uh, creations and how others can use, how others can share it uh, or how the others can reproduce these works while uh, representing the rights of the original or the creator. Now the uh, historical overview, how the uh, different laws of copyright and uh, uh, laws of design has came into existence. That is mentioned here, the historical overview. The idea of the copyright and uh, the design, it has been uh, the, for around ages, uh, starting from very ancient time, that is ancient beginnings. The copyright and uh, the design protection 
uh, it's originated from very old civilization ancient civilization uh, where the people were uh, they wanted to recognize uh, and control uh, having and to have a control over their creative work although not any official written laws was there but the concept of safeguarding their creativity or originality was done with a mutual respect or with a, uh, the intellect uh, the, with the uh, yeah with the respect only mutual respect only they used to uh, protect it uh, those who are doing that one others never tried to imitate it in in the ancient time in the medieval manuscripts uh, that means during the medieval times uh, the scribes and uh, creators in uh, the monasteries they had a type of copyright uh, over uh, over the work or the crafted work they they used to do so they were often asked to make special copies of uh, the religious texts uh, and their uh, creations were highly valued that time then printing press and uh, and that uh, stationers company the logo of stationers company that i have took from the uh, uh, internet of course when i took the uh, image uh, it was not copyright as such uh, may be subjected to copyright like that it was mentioned that means they could have used some um, uh, giving uh, the respect to that uh, website from which i took a uh, simple google search i got this image uh, so i am not violating the law uh, um, legally i am not violating i am using it to uh, represent my viewers uh, to understand uh, that a uh, logo uh, what that stiffer um, a stationer's a company uh, they when they initiated how their logo they, it was created it's a publicity to your company okay so the invention of uh, the printing press uh, during the 15th century it changed how the written books were uh, were distributed it was in uh, 1557 uh, this uh, stationer's company in england was formed which started giving the exclusive rights uh, to the printers uh, for publishing and reproducing certain works as an early form of the copyright uh, mainly focused uh, to regulate the the printing industry then comes the the statue of anne in 1710 uh, it was an art form a story published in england uh, 1710 uh, it was established one of the first copyright laws was established which provides authors and the publishers the exclusive right to their work uh, for actually a limited time creating a legal foundation for protecting the uh, literary works okay so that one also given there uh, the image is given there which shows that uh, the statue of uh, light uh, the statue of uh, a light and a is commonly accepted as the very first copyright law that recognize the rights of others okay i got this image from uh, google only it is itself it is indicating this was written not i have not added to that it's already there then international treaties uh, in the 19th as well as 20th century the international treaties they aimed to standardize the copyright laws one of the example given as the uh, brené convention the Brené Convention which was in uh, 1886 uh, and other agreements uh, which is sort of common ground for uh, protecting copyrights among the participating countries. Then the digital age and globalization. Uh, in this digital age uh, that is the late 20th century, uh, we are in 21st century actually, the digital age uh, of the late 20th century brought new challenges and uh, opportunities uh, for the uh, designers as well as those who are uh, uh, wanted copyrights the legal framework which i adapted uh, which uh, that addresses the piracy the digital uh, rights as well as intellectual property dispute across the even across the borders uh, then the present scenario contemporary landscape today the uh, uh, designers law and uh, the designers law keeping they are getting adjusted to new technologies and global connections and these are all uh, controlled or uh, the international agreements like the agreement on uh, the the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights 
that is trips it, this plays an, a crucial role in shaping and setting the uh, the standards of uh, for intellectual property protection the worldwide now next point justification for copyright law justification for copyright law copyright law serves as the the fundament uh, the foundation for the protection of intellectual property rights ipr uh, fostering the creativity and uh, incent incentiving uh, means giving incentives uh, and uh, giving uh, value to the original work copyright law it uh, actually it balance between the rights of a creator as well as the public interest aiming to promote uh, both the creativity as well as to uh, to assess the knowledge uh, how to assess the knowledge that also covers under copyright laws there are various uh, justifications uh, uh, under uh, which underlie the different copyright laws uh, includes the the natural law perspective emphasizing the inherent creator's right uh, as well as the the economic uh, rationale which focuses on uh, providing uh, uh, providing the creator with the financial incentives okay so that comes under this topic uh, another natural uh, law justification natural law justification uh, uh, of uh, copyright it is a perspective which is rooted in the belief that the creator who the one who is do, uh, creating that work uh, he has the inherent right uh, over uh, his creation based on the moral principle uh, based on this view the act of creation he granted uh, that is for the individuals uh, a certain rights are granted to that such uh, individuals uh, and we call it as the copyright this is to recognize his work as well as to protect his rights for example example mentioned here when an author he writes a book the natural law justification it asserts that the author inherently deserves the right to control of how their work is used and to receive credit for their creative effort okay so natural law of justification is about uh, uh, a person's uh, work uh, giving moral to his work and uh, uh, giving recognition to that uh, there is no money involved there is no uh, incentives involved in that whereas the economic uh, rationale of copyright clause it is a justification for the copyright law based on the economic principles so for instance when an artist or an author or the inventor is uh, uh, granted exclusive right to their work for a certain period they have the opportunity to financially benefit from their from their work for the creative endeavor endeavors so this economic motivation according to the rationale encourages the individual to invest time effort and resources into producing valuable and innovative works okay that's about uh, it's not module 2 it is module 4 part 1 and just took that uh, module 2 slide to prepare this so thank you very much for uh, watching my videos kindly do subscribe and support uh, uh, once i com completely cover one set of class videos then i will visit back and i will make another set of videos uh, to simplify this topics so uh, thank you very much for watching my videos and uh, have a nice day